African Americans get irritated at Myron from Fresh and Fit for the same reason why they get irritated at Tyler, who says, I'm colored. They don't like challenger continental Africans who come from the continent, go to the West, do well, and challenge their monopoly over the black voice in the world. Hello everyone, I am Cerebral and this is Cerebral Talks TV. Thank you for joining me. I want to share some video clips with you from many black people right here in America who have something to say because, you know, Tyla won a BET award. Now we know there was a lot of controversy because Tyla identifies as colored, which is an ethnicity and culture in South Africa. Africa. And there were some people who have a big problem with that. They feel like if you're in America, you would be seen as black. You need to identify as black. And Tyla is basically like, look, I'm colored. This is my culture, my ethnicity. And I personally, I don't have, I don't really see the big deal about it completely. And I also feel like I've seen a lot of vitriol towards her as if she's done something to black people in this country. She hasn't said anything racist or offensive, but yet I've been looking at some of these videos and there are some who are truly angry towards this woman. And I don't have all the video clips, but you got a mixture going on. You got a mixture going on where it's something deeper going on towards this being offended and angry towards her. And all I'm going to address some things, okay? Just stay with me a good a little bit, just a few little minutes, okay? Because I wanna I wanna talk about a few things before I show you the video clip. Okay, so Tyla went to the BET Awards. She won the BET Award over Sexy Red. There are some people outraged about it because Sexy Red has been one of the top performers and top rappers in America. I'm not about to argue on the behalf of Sexy Red, who is at, who is a disgrace to me at large. I don't even know why black women would want to even uplift her. I really, no, absolutely not. Okay, so again, she says she's colored. That's her ethnicity in South Africa. And there are people who think that being called black in America is ridiculous. You know, there are people who say that, you know, they, they'll say a lot of things. It just doesn't make sense to them. But when people say they're black in America, you're usually talking about black American, AKA African American. You know, like if someone's from Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic or from Haiti, and they might say, I'm not black. Usually when they say that, they, they're saying, I am not an African American. I am not black American. I don't descend from black Americans. My culture is not black Americans. Okay. That's what that means a lot of times. And again, Tyler didn't say anything to insult black Americans. She simply said she was colored. She went on the breakfast club and then she, her, her publicist or someone kind of gave her the thing like don't answer it she didn't answer it anymore then she came out with a statement saying I never denied my blackness she said I am Zulu Zulu is black you know African that's what people mean she's Zulu Indian from India and I forgot what type of European now there will be black people who will say well okay and we're mixed up over here yeah but it's still different in different countries you go to OK, it, that's just that's just how what it is, just like over in America, she might have a culture shock, you know, trying to say, oh, I have to be labeled black and I am i don't identify as black. I'm not seen as black from where I come from. All right. So now let me address some things that I've been hearing throughout different videos that my personal opinion. Now, I think that is great that Tyler could become South Africa's first music superstar. It's something we've never seen in music. So she's just, you know, a young, a young girl, young woman trying to fulfill her dreams. And I don't see anything wrong with that. I think it would be great for South Africa. But there are also people who are saying that 
her style and she has nothing to do with American black culture as far as music. I definitely have an opinion with that. Okay, so what's interesting to me is that there are some people who feel like, well, because she says she's not black, she has no right to be within black American culture as far as singing maybe R&B or showing up to the BET Awards. And I couldn't help but think of Jennifer Lopez. What, what, how is it that Tyler can have all this vitriol towards her, but Jennifer Lopez was accepted within the black American community when she first came out, especially. She was, she was on In Living Color. She, her music, and I like a lot of her music. I'm just saying, no one had a problem with J-Lo. No one had a problem with Jennifer Lopez. Okay, you also have Eminem. Eminem, okay, who can be a little bit problematic. He is considered, a lot of black men call him one of the greatest top rappers of all time. Eminem was fully accepted. Okay, he, he was. Then you have... Big Lotto. Now, Big Lotto, I think her father is African-American. And I understand if you compare her to Tyla, she has more ties to black people in America because she's a part of the black American ethnicity. These are her people from her father's side and grandma and everything like that. But the reason why I'm putting up Big Lotto is because if it's all about well, who was a uh, mixture and all this stuff? Well, okay, Big Lotto is mixed, but um, she is accepted by black people. She identifies as black. Her father's black. Okay, and I understand that, you know, black people, we don't have any, we're not of Zulu heritage on average. That's from, I think, South the South African region. Our African ancestry we have comes from West Africa. So it's completely different. But in America... You see, in America, it says on the U.S. Census, you are black if you have any ancestry out of the continent of Africa. That's what it says on the U.S. Census and on any form you go to. So black people, no matter where they're coming from, whether you're biracial, multiracial, um, straight up African, Caribbean, Hispanic, you will get lumped into the black category in America because it says you basically have more recent ancestry from the continent of Africa. Okay, that's what that means in America. And some people feel differently. Okay, so I address that, my opinion with that. Now, someone said that Tyla has no influence from black Americans and I have to disagree. Let's keep the facts, the facts, okay? Even if you're angry at black American people or African-American, okay? Some people don't like me to say African-American, but this is what the government and this is just what it is until black people change that label. That's just what it is right now. Okay, black African-American, because I need you to know who I'm talking about, created R&B, created jazz music, created the original rock and roll, um, hand in hand, but basically created country music and house music, which also influenced electronica music. Now you have Hispanics in Latin America making reggaeton, reggaeton music, which is really good. And now you have Africans making Afro beats. All of that is connected to African Americans culture that started hip hop and R and B. OK, just keep the facts, the facts. OK, and it's perfectly OK to be influenced. I think the problem lies when some act like black people in America didn't do anything and you haven't been influenced at all and you created this and that. You're not paying homage. You're not giving flowers. And this is where people will say, well, are they culture vultures? You want to do things associated with the culture, but you don't really want to be with the culture. That's what some people say. It's a mixture going on. So one thing Tyler does. Now look, she is South African, beautiful South African woman, okay? But I noticed some things. She has that grill on one of her, her tooth. She has a diamond grill type of thing on her tooth. Everybody knows that diamonds on your teeth and silver teeth and gold teeth grills comes from African-American hip hop culture. Everyone knows this if they're honest with themselves. Okay. Just, just, just keep it real. Keep it real.
Even her hairstyle in that picture. Now, I know that braids is traditionally African. African Americans made wearing hair braids popular around the world. Let's just be honest. But that style, the one all the way on the right, having designs with cornrows like that, that comes from African Americans. Okay, I remember when Alicia Keys, now Alicia Keys is half white, but you know, she grew up in African American culture. Her father's African American. And black women, African American women, with made wearing your hairstyles with these detailed cornrows, styled like that, popular. We remember when Nelly came out and all the black girls in America had um, cornrows going on, doing all these different styles and stuff like that. But I also know that braids is also, you know, out of Africa too. I'm just saying American black women made hair braids popular. Black American women have made a lot of things popular globally that people often don't want to give props to. Now, some of her music sounds, it has an R&B flair, flavor to it. R&B comes from African Americans. And there's nothing wrong if she wants to sing it. Tyler is still unique. She has her own flavor as a South America, South African, and that's perfectly fine too. There are people who are denying a few things. When she said, now I, I don't understand why some black people got mad at her because she said he ain't never had a pretty girl from Joburg and that's what he prefers. I thought it was a catchy line because honestly, no one has ever really seen the South African women from jo Johannesburg. She's she repping, she's repping from for where she comes from. And black women have done it all the time in music. She's letting it be known. Look, I'm repping, I'm repping Johannesburg, Joe Berg. OK, they ain't never seen it. Of course, we know there are beautiful women all over all over Africa. OK, this is just something that women say. You ain't never seen it like this. Come on. It wasn't that deep or that serious to me. Now the issue where black women are saying that monoracial black women are being erased, that is that that's not 100 percent true, but it is also a little bit true. The whole colorism stuff that has been going on for a few, at least a decade now in black America, way before Tyla was even known. So you need to be honest with that. Don't try to put that on Tyla. She's not erasing the black um, black women who look more the fitting black look to you. OK, you have black women out right now in America. OK, whose whose careers you could be supporting. OK, you got Chloe Bailey. OK, and you have Coco Jones, just to name two of them. You also have Tanache, who is half white who can't even reach success like Tyla. And I think she makes great music and she's a pretty woman. So what can you say to that? She had, Tyla has a good marketing team, okay? Tyla does not have to apologize for being pretty because I noticed some things in videos. People don't have to apologize for being attractive. And when it comes to the whole erasure of, let's be honest, black women don't look the same. When you talk about erasure of monoracial black women, you, what you really are saying, black women who look the more stereotypical black look to you. And we all know what that means. And here's the thing. There has been a push against black women with uh, more Negroid, strongly Negroid features being represented in black American media. And we know that when a woman becomes a superstar in the black community, she starts off in the black community. Then you switch to being mainstream in a household name and mainstream America is just a cold word for white America, other races like you. Okay. And I've talked about this before. And one thing too, is that you have to be an S.E. You have to have S-E-X appeal. Men have to like you. They have to like how you look so you can become something men fantasize about and become, you know, you're on the posters. You're talked about. Why do you think these women make S-E-X-ual music? It's to appeal to men. And many black women with various phenotypes, all of our phenotypes appeal to a number of men, especially a number of men who are not black, but in some countries they are very racist. So that's why they say, you know, being, having a strongly black look doesn't always sell because basically people are racist in some countries. But here's the part no one wants to say. 
you getting and you get angry who's marketing who who's the men have to lust for you that helps your career see a lot of monoracial black women are not hugely successful in america because black men don't want to see them and y'all know this the whole um i don't deny the colorism and featureism stuff that happens, it happens. It's not always 100% correct. Some things people say, but we, if we can be honest, those type of issues do exist. And I feel like you want women who black men think are attractive to not have a career or paint them as racist and colorist. And you want to push for more black women with strongly Negroid features, which is perfectly fine, but black men run hip hop and they run a lot of the music industry and white men and white people only latch on to who's more, they, they look and see who's popular in the black community. Then you get PR, the press, the marketing going on, who can make money for our company, who's popping. Okay. So when you see women who um don't look strongly Negroid to you getting popular by, by white America it's only because they're looking to see who are black people hyping up within the community and who can we make some money off of? Cause it's about money at the end of the day and black men, especially hip hop is the biggest genre. They they're the ones who are racist towards monoracial black women. That's the root problem as to why a monoracial phenotypes and negroid phenotypes don't get pushed up a lot because black men within the industry they don't want to promote that so then when the girls like tyla get popular then you get angry at them when really the racism is actually coming from the black man he's the one that's actually racist up in the black community but no one wants to say that and I feel like all phenotypes of black women have has to be represented because black women don't look one way and you have to be fair. And I feel like every skin complexion, every hair texture, every phenotype needs to be represented like we used to see more in the 1990s and the early 2000s, because that is an accurate depiction of black women. But, um, you know. Don't go blaming all the white people and executives for what you're seeing when it's actually a number of black men within the industry who are responsible for, for that a lot of times. And again, I have a video about Beyonce and all the women in the industry who were lighter than her or just as light, just as beautiful, even considered more attractive and their careers didn't go nowhere. So it's, it's more deeper than what people say. You got to have a good team. You have to have a strong work ethic and you need good promotion. You have black women again in the industry who have monoracial features that black women are not always um, marketing or promoting. Let's just be honest. And then you have black men all, all over the internet crapping on black women. They're not pushing for those women to have careers and to be seen as uh SCX, uh, you know, appeal and men globally wanting them even. Oh, it's just a whole video, even though there are plenty of black women who do have success with men, not black promoting them like the black women, beauty queens that you see winning, winning these shows because of white men acknowledging and seeing their beauty. So it's a whole lot. I'm going to be quiet. I've been talking longer than what I thought. So basically, let's jump into it. I want to play these video clips, okay? I will be reading the comments below. And you all just sit back and hear the opinions about Tyler from Black Americans at large. This is, I want to dedicate this one to all the African superstars before me. I didn't get these opportunities that I'm getting. I'm sorry, but Tyler... Winning Best New Artist Over Sexy Red is blasphemy. I'm flabbergasted. What's the new word of the month? F diabolical. Like, I'm sorry. This girl does not even legit identify directly with the culture. She's South African. And there's no slight to her calling herself colored because for obvious cultural differences and cultural reasons, that's how she identifies. And I get so annoyed when I see y'all up in the comment section say, she black, she black. No, she's not. We're not about the one drop rule. We not. We got to stop doing that. It's not the days of old. It's 2024. That girl is a mixed breed. She considers herself colored because she's mixed up with a bunch of different stuff. Let the mixed people be mixed. Now that we got that out the way, sexy red, the crowd was chanting, get it sexy, get it sexy. Like it is a catastrophe. 
that Tyler won with her one song, that water that everybody was doing a little dance on Tickety Talk. But the whole crowd, did y'all see how the crazy the crowd was going when Sexy Red was performing? Like, how yo, Sexy Red legit has been running the 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 industry as far as women go, even men. Her records have been bangers back to back to back. I'm sorry, and I'm not even a biggest sexy red advocate, but you can't deny that she legit is moving the, the culture forward. Like, you cannot deny that. This is something is going on. It's giving industry plant. It's giving payola. I don't. I don't know. Anyway, what y'all think about this? Cause I, child, swear I love us the Brooklyn. Oh, darling, you should be more concerned about why the cotton picking minority in a foreign country had more rights than you did in 1993 when you were the majority of your country. You should also be concerned that the cotton pickers and the other people in the African diaspora had to help you get your rights and your freedom after apparently being freed from the Brits in 1910. Meaning when I was being born, you were just gaining your freedom. Don't you have bigger concerns with a new liberated country that is less than 50 years old than arguing with me about Tyla? And though I no longer pick cotton, I do pick cotton up from the fabric store to make cute little cotton dresses for my niece for the summer. Have a great day. Hey y'all, my name is Autumn and here's my thoughts on Tyla and her marketing team. All right, so let's get into it. So Tyler last night won, um, what is it, like the International Award, Artist Award, and a lot of people were talking about like over Burna Boy, over Thames, like how could she have done that? Well, here's what I'm thinking of how she could have done that. Tyler's team has been at work ever since they tried to position her in America. Um, I feel like she's been everywhere. She's been kind of pretty much like pushing our faces from the Gap campaign, from her music, from her debut album, from like forcing a tour to then now like her viral dances and things like that because people like you know, her, and I'm not even gonna, like, I know I'm light skin, so I'm gonna say people like her skin, so I'm lighter. They usually get positioned more in American faces versus actual artists that we have, because I was just like, we have hella other artists that never get this much, like, marketing push. But we gotta go back to where it all started. So Tyla, you know, even though she had that viral hit, Water, um, her tour got canceled, and then people were like, oh, it's because she has an injury. Like, J-Lo needs to be with her family. Like, so it's like, we know kind of the PR tactics. Why is your story getting canceled, Miss Man? It's saying like she has a tragic injury that worsened and she has to see all the specialists and doctors and all these things, never came out with it. And I know people are like, well, celebrities don't owe us nothing, but we live in an era where celebrities tell us certain things. Like they tell us like what's going on with them. They tell us like, okay, this is an update. Now, um, if you're like selling a world tour and you just popped out as an artist, and the tickets aren't selling, half of me thought like, okay, is this supposed to be like a sympathy card? To be like, oh no, what's wrong with Tyla? Or is she really like sick? You know, you never know. But what we see in PR, mm, it's 50-50 sometimes. Like she could be faking it. And the media blogs came out saying like, oh, you know, she's falsifying this and everything, but she'll be back in the summer. Which is interesting because her debut album was supposed to drop in the summer. And it seems like ever since her debut album dropped and her tour was canceled, there's been like this big push for her to be in like black American faces. Tyler being on Kaisenet's like streaming was a big example of that because we saw just some moments kind of pop out there and he asked her on a date which was kind of weird for him to do on live I'm not gonna hold you because why would you put me in that position to embarrass you and then everybody like made these like viral comments about it and then we'll be seeing more viral TikToks or just like influencers like kind of going to her listening party and these things but I think this one was like the moment where we realized what was going on um, well, some of us, because she got to answer one question for herself. She wasn't media trained. She just wanted to go up there and talk about her album. And I feel like her team failed her here. Like it was going good until they got to the breakfast club because her team failed her. Like they knew that Charlemagne was not going to go easy on her. When has he ever gone easy on any artist? He has history of making people cry. Like he has history of making people frustrated. Like, they they don't hold back on the breakfast club and he was just asking about her racial identity asking about the injury asking about other things and she didn't want to answer it and it's just like her team set her up to fail here because now we're all thinking like well girl are you black like you know do you like to be black do you identify as black but then also you know besides that it's like what was the injury 
that seems to have miraculously healed because you're dancing, you're performing, you're up and down stage, you're doing media promo and tours. So what was going on? And she didn't want to answer it. And this goes back to my theory. So if you stay with me this long, you know, my theory was I feel like her marketing team deserves an Oscar or an Emmy because the way that they are pushing her in our face is so crazy because I have never seen this much of an artist push in a, in a minute since, I mean, I spice, yeah, but like Tyla is being pushed in our faces. Now, don't get me wrong. The songs are cute. The bop is cute. The vibes are cute. But I, I think we all see what's going on with her. With this Tyler situation, I think that Americans are just tired of people coming from across the water blowing up. Because I never seen someone blow up and get so much backlash very quickly. Like any little thing she do, everybody just turn and clean the fuck up. And my thing is, why not stay over there where the fuck you at? It ain't no celebrities over there. I'm just trying to figure out like why everybody always trying to come to America. And ten times out of ten, I'm knowing she talking shit in with when there's no cameras around about America. So it's just like, why? Why y'all be coming here wanting to blow up? It's just getting annoying at this point. It's plenty of talented people in America. We really need to be focusing on them. Because what the fuck? I get it, though. She want to be the next Rihanna, but I think... I think with super... I think it ain't no more superstars unless they white. Because anybody black coming through, ain't shit popping. Ain't shit going on. Take your ass back to Joannesburg or wherever the fuck you from. Whatever you said in that weak ass song. African Americans get irritated at Myron from Fresh and Fit for the same reason why they get irritated at Tyla who says I'm colored. They don't like challenger continental Africans who come from the continent, go to the West, do well and challenge their monopoly over the black voice in the world. But as America declines, African-American influence in the world will also decline. They want to hold the microphone all the time and talk about systemic racism and police brutality. Fine, fair enough. We heard your story before. We supported Black Panthers. We supported the civil rights. We supported Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Farrakhan. But you are not the only people in the world who are victimized by Western imperialism. Look at Palestine. Look at Yemen. Look at Sudan. Tyler Winnen actually pissed me off most about last night because I think they really need to stop marketing her towards black Americans when she didn't come out on more than one occasion saying that she don't want to be grouped in with us. What does that tell you? On a network run by black Americans or white people, whoever owns BET, that she does not want to be a part of our culture. Yeah, cool. And objectively, whether you like it or not, Sexy Red was on fire this past year. Hit after hit after hit, banger after banger, and she's still dropping. And what Tyler got? Water? Yeah, she's a great international superstar. I I'll give her credit. But come on. Sexy Red, bruh. I think it really just boils down to respectability politics. Because even though BET has no standards now, I feel like it would be seen as too ghetto for Sexy Red to win. Even though BET is the same people that gave Sexy Red a platform. I think Sexy should have won. I think Tyler don't need to be here. I remember when Tyla first came on the scene and people were like, oh, like they're trying to market her as the next Rihanna. Like she wants to be the next Rihanna from her style, her looks, like her not being from America, et cetera, et cetera. And while I could slightly see what people were talking about, um, Tyla never gave Rihanna to me. I think I know like one Tyla song, which is Water. I feel like Rihanna had mad hits when she first came out. Like, she just started dropping hit after hit after hit. Also, Rihanna has always been vocal about identifying as a black woman, being a black woman, being proud to be a black woman, created a whole brand based off being inclusive because so many black women had problems with finding makeup that really works for them and finding makeup that matches their skin tone like in my opinion tyla could never be the, like the next rihanna and i remember what i think even tyla in an interview said she wanted to be like rihanna if not bigger and i was like okay 
Kyla not identifying as a black woman is 100% okay. All of this discourse around why she's rejecting her blackness, why is she accepting BET awards, is missing some historical context. Kyla is from South Africa, which has a completely different racial caste system. But as black Americans, it seems that we cannot fathom, and rightfully so, that in other nations, there is more nuance to blackness than just being of color or being black. In South Africa, where there were literally laws upholding this racial caste system up until 1994, being colored legally afforded you more rights than being a Negro or black person. Meanwhile, in the US, when we have conversations about blackness, anybody who has a drop of black in them was considered a black person, no matter what. So when I keep seeing this recycled debate about Tyler not identifying as black, I think we need to all just recognize that her and her team cannot just automatically adjust to the racial caste system that we have here. And it's obvious they've never experienced it or knew what to expect when it came to black American culture, the way that her team is making her avoid talking about these issues. And we know as black Americans, you have to talk about race. If you deny being a black person or you even add nuance to being black by saying, oh, I'm actually mixed, we take that as you're rejecting your blackness. So to Tyla and her team, she cannot actively identify as a black person when in South Africa, the way this caste system is set up, being colored is an identity in and of itself. It's separate from being black. Of course, you're still of color when you travel everywhere and when you travel around the world, but in South Africa, it's a completely different beast. And I'm not going to place the blame on my people because I understand that we have been programmed to view race a specific way in a way that is a binary, either you're black or you're white. But when it comes to this Tyler debate, I need us to be more open in thinking about the experiences of people of color in non-Western nations. Because two things can be true. Tyler can be perceived as a black woman in other parts of the world and also be a colored woman from South Africa. She's not wrong for saying that she is a colored woman when that is her experience in her home country of South Africa. So we have people on social media mad that Tyler won a BET award for best new artist. No cap, congrats to her. That was fast. And she also has a Grammy. So now the reason why people feel like Tyler does not deserve this BET award as a brand new artist, because we have people saying that she doesn't even identify as black or she robbed sexy red or she's not even from America. She's from South Africa. And how some people only know about one song from her, which is the song Water. And honestly, that's the only song that I know. Just my opinion, though. Now, not too long ago, she went on The Breakfast Club for Charlemagne. And uh, she pretty much released a statement about how she never denied her blackness. Basically, in South Africa, the black for them is called colored. So she's called colored as black in South Africa. Correct me if I'm wrong, my South Africans, because I know I, I be getting a lot of y'all. But anyways, let me know your thoughts. Do you believe that Tyler should have won this uh, BET award as the best new artist? Or do you think it should have belonged to Sexy Red or some other rapper like Boss Mandilo? Other than that, happy BET, my nick. Tyler is a colored woman in the South African context. In the American context, we would consider her black. It's really not that hard. If you understand the context and you understand that different countries have different racial categorizations. Within the context of South Africa, she's a colored woman. She is not black. But when she comes to America and she's in a different context and there's a different racial categorization, we would consider her black. I can attest to something fairly similar. When I was studying abroad at the University of Johannesburg, by the way, I'm wearing my South African shirt. Shout out to South Africa. And I went to go sign up for some student organizations. They would have racial categories. And the racial categories they had was African, colored, white, Asian, other. There was no just black identification. So for a minute, it took me aback because I'm used to just marking black, African-American, that's it. But now I'm in a different context. I have to rethink this. I have to think, okay, within the African context, I'm a black man, I'm African-American, I'm of African descent, I'm an African man. And so I marked African. This whole Tyler situation shouldn't be blowing up, starting diaspora wars in this tit-for-tat battle if people just simply understood within 
different contexts, different cultures, you're going to have different racial categorizations. In South Africa, she's a colored woman. In America, we would consider her black. In Brazil, she might be pardo. Understand that different contexts have different categorizations. What Tyler on this app has said, because she is in the U.S. and it is a slur here. Okay, first and foremost, being colored in South Africa is considered a slur too. Do not let these people gaslight you into thinking the word colored is a term of endearment. Let me prove that to you. In my last video, I stated I root for everybody and then I root for everybody black, but I'll never root for anybody colored. Here's what I meant. I root for everybody. I root for everybody black means I root for everybody with that one drop rule that applies to them, which means if you have a drop of blackness in your bloodline, I'm rooting for you because you are technically black. In South Africa, the word apartheid means separateness. It literally translates to the state of being apart, literally aparthood. South Africa literally separated people into four classes, white, Indian, colored, black. They practice spatial segregation. The further you are away from white, the lower on the class system you were. I will not address the white or the Indian thing right now, but I will address the colored thing because colored people in South Africa keep making it seem like we're trying to take away their culture. Babes, your culture needed to die a long time ago because the word colored was used as a slur towards you and you're trying to use it as a benefit. These racial classifications encourage the idea that different groups of people needed to compete for basic dignity basic human rights, different economic opportunities. If you were labeled colored, you had more opportunities for food, for housing, for shelter, for money. As long as you were mixed and identified as colored, you were safe from being black, from being treated as a black person. Now, arguably, black people are the most mixed people on the planet. If you looked at me, you, now looking at me, you probably can't even tell. My people are from West Africa. Benin and Nigeria. I'm also mixed with German and Chinese. Ni hao. But I identify as black and mixed. The director of programs for Rivonia Circle said the apartheid government didn't just give people categories, it gave real live material meaning to those names. And that is why the colored people of South Africa are still holding on to the word colored because it brings them benefits and privileges that black people do not have. The problem with the Tyler situation and the colored situation is they are marketing her to a black audience because they know the fame and recognition and the power of what the black audience can do. They want the benefits of being black for Tyler, but they don't want the black struggle attached to Tyler. Colored people are afraid of identifying as black because it will remove the protection the word colored brings. And what's funny is segregation happened in South Africa the same way it happened here in the United States. They were forced to use those colored bathrooms. They were forced to use those colored entrances and they had the dog shit beat out of them for, for being colored. And yet the word colored was used the same in America as well as South Africa of the protection being lifted from them if they identify as black. We will not allow the word colored to be soft launched back into the United States. The word colored is not a category here and we will not tolerate that. And get rid of the word colored, it's not cute. And it's ne it was never a word of endearment. It's not. And what's crazy is the fact that the same South African government labeled visibly white Asians honorary whites. And nowhere in this world do we have any South Korean, Japanese people walking around calling themselves identifying as honorary white. Because they understood those people were playing in their face. Because what do you mean I'm an honorary white? What the hell does that mean? Visibly white Asians could understand that being labeled an honorary white is a slur? 
than you colored people, you could go ahead and wrap your head around that too. You're being obtuse for no reason. You're being dense in the head for no reason. The situation with Tyler goes hand in hand with the conversation of the erasure of monoracial black women in media in the public eye in general. If you're not aware of this conversation, to basically sum it up, when it comes to media, whether it be film or music, when it's time to represent a black woman or to cast a black woman, the roles are basically given to racially ambiguous women. Thus, that has been causing um, a lot of monoracial black women to speak up on it and feel like they are not being represented uh, properly in media, which we never really were to begin with. But um, I've been seeing this like a lot, a lot, especially when like I'm watching like TV shows now. If there is that there's going to be a monoracial black husband, um, the son is more than likely he's going to be monoracial, visibly, like clearly, clearly black. Um, when it comes to the mom and daughter, though, they are going to look like second generation mix. Like you going to be like, eh. I can kind of see the black in them, but not really. Like, you're going to have to turn turn your nose up. And the only thing that you're basically able to identify them by is the hair, basically. Now, how that lines up with Tyla is that um, she's benefiting from black culture. And she is she's in these spaces, but she doesn't want to be seen as black. Now, I'm very much aware of you can't tell people what they are. And that's not what I'm saying. But at the same time move on from our spaces then this raises a question for me and for other people if she was from anywhere else other than africa do you think that she would have such an issue with people talking about her race do you honestly think that she would um or her team prior to her going to interviews and different stuff she would tell them or they would tell um the interviewers not to ask her about race do you honestly think that that would be a conversation would it be such a huge thing what i'm getting at is when it comes to being black and blackness in general no no matter what part of the diaspora that you are in people want to tread lightly um lightly enough where oh i can still dabble in the culture i can still benefit from the culture but i really don't want people to know that i'm black or i don't care to give that side of myself I think that Tyler is a part of that group of people that they want to be seen and that they want to be pushed. And what I mean by this, for example, I just seen a video on here where someone was in India and they were like, I didn't even know that there were Afro Indians. And I'm thinking like, yeah, you didn't know because they didn't, they didn't want you to know. They didn't want you to see that skin tone. They didn't want you to see that hair texture. And if you're a part of the um, what you're supposed to look like group, you're of course they're gonna push you more because once again you are what they want you to look like i hope like y'all y'all stand with me and basically what i'm saying and i think for the people who are black and love being black we need to stop trying to get these people to realize this aspect of something that they don't that they one they do realize they just don't care maybe they don't care to identify as black and that's fine but at the same time you don't they don't need to be in our in our spaces and in our culture because what they're doing is they're treading that line like i was saying earlier they're taking what they get from our culture and then they're going back into their non-black spaces and giving it away to them and i feel like this is what kendrick lamar was getting at in the sense of the culture being infiltrated and giving these black cars and passes to people who don't care about being black beyond um pop culture and then the social benefits that we have of it to wrap this up, if these people don't want to identify as black or whatever the case may be, don't force them. Let them people be. But at the same time, leave them where they're at. If that's the case, then Tyler should give back her award that she won last night at the BET Awards, which stands for Black Entertainment Television Awards. Because if she's not black, she doesn't deserve to get black American prizes. And also her thanking BET for pushing the culture and keeping the culture going is very funny considering that she's not part of the culture. I'm glad we agree though. She doesn't need black Americans and we don't need her. She can go. Y'all see how Tyla is grouped into being black at the BET Awards? I think that's what black people were talking about when they was like, you're gonna be grouped in with black people. Like you're gonna be, oh, you're black. Cause she's at the BT words.
If she's not black, then she shouldn't be at the BET Awards. They never had a pretty girl from Joburg to me now, and that's what they prefer. I'm so glad black people are clocking this bullshit with Tyler because I never fucked with Tyler. Like, ever since Water. Like, cute little song, but like, listening to Water, I was like, this ain't for me. Like, she's not for me. Like, I get what she was doing. And like, I'm glad I like heard this little snippet of this song because like, listening to like her other music, you, you start to hear what her mission is. Like, you know what people say when they say, if you shut up and listen to people, they'll tell on themselves. Her mission is to come over here and profit off of like black people who like, prefer biracial bitches, who prefer white bitches, who are colorists. Her mission is to come over here and get big because of colorism. Like people are gonna want like not regular smegular ass black bitches from here. Like they're gonna want some foreign bitch. Tyler choosing to surround herself with black American music, black American culture, black American artists, black American pop. If you go look at the comments on this video, the South Africans have called me everything but a child of God. They have said it's always a black woman who looks like me. And it's like, oh, babe, sit your anti-blackness jump out. Anyway, they said that I'm uneducated. I have three degrees. They said that I need to get out and travel more. I'm on my second passport. And they told me that I'm just uninformed about South African culture. Okay. Even if I am uninformed about South African culture, I'm not uninformed about black American culture. And I said what the F I said. It was disingenuous for her and her team to go to one of the most popular black radio stations and refuse to answer questions about her racial identity. Because to my knowledge, she's talked about it twice, once on the radio and once in a magazine, which is a completely different audience than The Breakfast Club. That's number one. Number two, it didn't come off like she was tired of talking about this. It came off like, I don't have to answer this to you black Americans, which is two totally different contexts. And I think that's what the black Americans are picking up on because that's what I picked up on. And I told y'all to stop telling black Americans to go Google stuff because they were not going to like what they found. And sure enough, they have learned that the term colored comes from anti-blackness. They have also maybe identified that Tyler comes from a rich family and now they associate her success with payola and think she's an industry plant. And they've gone as far to say they don't think that she should have won that Grammy over Burner Boy or Tim's. Okay. And they think because she's light skinned and she's pretty, they want her to be the face of Afrobeats instead of the darker complected people, which now we have a colorism conversation on our hand. So by her avoiding those questions has spiraled into everything else. And I'm not sure her team is equipped enough to bring her back from this because the music ain't that great. Kyla is out here accidentally starting diaspora wars, and I have something to say. As someone who just went to the National Museum of African American History in DC, all this is pointless. Y'all are always fighting about who's better, who's right within the diaspora, and it is literally pointless. Because it literally doesn't matter if you're a Black American, African, Caribbean, Afro-European, Afro-Latina. If you look Black, you will be perceived as Black and that comes with a lot of discrimination and persecution. Like literally that has been our history as a people for the past 400 years, no matter where you are in the world. And we come online trying to see who's better or who's actually Black. And I'm here to tell you that that does not matter, that we should not consider ourselves the enemy. And once we realize who the real enemy is, I'm not gonna say anything on this TikTok, but once we realize who the real enemy is, I think we as a people, as a whole, will make some progress. What the South Africans is mad. I made that video saying to stop marketing Tyler to black people and they just been attacking me and my appearance ever since. But I listen to somebody else talk about it and I think I understand the problem. In America, we love a thin, waif-like, racially ambiguous, not black woman. See, look, I'm agreeing with you now. Mm -hmm. I feel like Tyler and her team thought they were gonna use these racial sensitivities to their advantage. They didn't feel like they had to prove anything to a black community because she's skinny and light skinned. We should automatically love her. Problem is we don't have the same kind of tier level to colorism as y'all do in South Africa. Like, sure, she's racially ambiguous, but is she racially ambiguous enough? To white people, that still looks like a black lady. And to black people, that still looks like a black lady. So sorry to y'all, 
that she looks like a black lady. Like the level of light skin privilege that y'all are looking for, you haven't quite met that threshold and I feel that's a stumbling block for you. I feel like oftentimes people market things to black people thinking that we're not really a factor and look at how we can actually make or break a career. All right, so I thank you so much for joining me again. I know this is gonna be a lot of different opinions. What I will tell you, I do not tolerate colorism on this channel whether it's against someone being darker or lighter or mixed, keep your racism out of my space, okay? I don't tolerate it. I don't like it. Be respectful of what you say, okay? And I just, you know, I can't wait to read what y'all think. Do you think that Tyla should have said she's black? Do you have a problem that she says she's colored? Do you think her career should be ruined? Do you think she should have been invited to the BET Awards? Um, do you think that um, she's here as a plant to uh, push out black American women singers? Do you feel like she's been targeted? Do you think there's vitriol towards her from black Americans up over here? What is your opinion? Let let us know in the comment section again. I know this is going to be really, really good. I can't wait to hear what you all have to say. So I thank you all again for joining me. Please get those likes up. It really helps the channel. And if you subscribe, hit the bell for all notifications so you know when I'm live and when I'm uploading. You all take care. Bye.